Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. So in this video, we're gonna be covering the topic called certs. And as always, if you're new here and haven't subscribed, I would strongly suggest that you subscribe so that you stay updated uh, regarding all the videos that I will be posting next. Okay, so the topic that we're gonna be doing today is certs. Now, while this is very important for ad maths, this is also important for AS maths. So if you're an AS level student, so this is equally important for you. Now, while I should mention, while this may not be formally a topic of AS math, okay? But uh, there are a lot of topics that are counting on the fact that you already know how to deal with certs, okay? So we're gonna start off with some very simple activity, okay? Uh, if you if you don't have a calculator, pause this video, grab a calculator, and then start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down square root of eight in the calculator, okay? And then I'm gonna press equals to sign. And make sure, by the way, you have one of these natural display calculators. Not necessarily this one, but like calculators where you can see fractions the way they're supposed to be seen, okay? So what we get is 2 under root 2. Okay, that's interesting. So let's write that down. Root 8 is equal to 2 under root 2. What the calculator is doing is that it's simplifying, okay? But what we are interested in finding out is that how is it doing that? Okay, so if you write square root 48, you notice that you get 4 under root 3. And then if you, just like that, if you write square root 72, press the equals to sign, you'll notice that you get 6 under root 2. Now, the question here is not what is the simplified version of these square roots? The question here is that how does it do what it does? So for that, there's something we need to learn. Okay, this is which is the prerequisite of uh, if you want to be able to simplify certs, and that is called prime factorization. Now, this is something I'm sure that you already know from O-level math, but let's just quickly look into it uh, so that we know exactly how it works. Okay, so for prime, and by the way, a lot of people call this LCM, okay? Uh, this is not LCM, okay, LCM is something else. Prime, prime factorization is something else. Prime factorization is done of a single number. And when we're taking LCM, we take the LCM of two or more numbers. So let's write down eight over here. So eight can be written as, so we're, what we're gonna do is when we say prime factorization, we start dividing the number by the smallest prime number possible, okay? So eight can be divided by two. Okay, if it's an even number, you have to start with two. So two fours are, and then four again can not be divided by two. So two twos are, and then two again can also be divided by two. Let's keep making these lines here. So two ones are two, and there you go. Eight can basically be written as two times two times two. Now I've just realized that for 48 and 72, I haven't left enough space. So we'll have to compromise a little. So let's start dividing 48, or in fact, I'll just continue it downwards. Never mind, never mind what I said. So let's divide 48 by two. So two into 24, and then let's divide 24 by two again, so that's two into 12, and let's divide 12 by two again, so that's two into six, and let's divide six by two again, so that's three. And then finally, we can divide three by three, so that's one. And we're gonna keep on doing it till we don't get this one that we have at the very end, okay? Now it's time for 72. So let's do that. So 72, we can divide by two, two into 36, which we can divide by two again, two into 18, which we can divide by two again, two into nine, 3 divided by 9, sorry, 9 divided by 3, that's 3, and then 3 divided by 3, that's 1, so that means this is, so this is the prime factorization of 72. Now let's write them down one by one. So 48 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, yeah, and 3. Now I know what you're probably thinking, probably thinking, why am I writing 2 times 2 times 2 when I can just write 2 to the power 4? So if that's what you're thinking, nothing to worry about, there's a reason why. I'm writing it like this, which you'll find out in a minute. So two times two times two times three times three. Okay, great. So this is basically how prime factorization is done. You can take any number and write it as a product of its prime factors, okay? Now the question is that how do we use this to simplify certs? Well, let's look into that. So root eight can be written as, as I said, two times two times two, okay? Now what we do is when we're simplifying certs, we look for pairs inside the square root, okay? And when we say pair, we mean two, okay? Pair of socks and a pair of shoes, okay? So a pair means two in quantity, okay? So you can see that you have one pair of two. So what you do that is you take that pair, you bring it outside and you leave whatever is left inside. So what root eight becomes is that it becomes two, uh, root eight becomes is two under root two, okay? If you've understood this, that's great. If you haven't, nothing to worry about. Let's try the same with 48. So 48 we saw earlier can be written as two times two times two times two times three. Okay, now again, let's see how many pairs we can make here. So we can make a pair of two. So we'll bring that outside. We can make another pair of two. So we'll bring that outside also. So two times two becomes what? And by the way, since there was a two already outside, when we bring another two outside, it gets multiplied by the two that's already outside. 
So 2 into 2 is 4, and 4 under root 3 is what it becomes, and you can check using your calculator. Now let's try square root of 72. So square root of 72 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. Now you probably know why I didn't write it as 2 cubed into 3 squared. Okay, and yeah, so just so that we can see the pairs easily. So we have a pair of 2, so we'll bring that outside. We have another pair of 3, so we'll bring that outside. And multiplied by the 2, that's already outside. So 2 times 3 is 6, and that's what it becomes, 6 under root 2. Now here are a few examples that I would like you guys to try on your own, and make sure to use a calculator to then check your answer so that you don't need mine or anybody else's help in order to tell you whether you've done it correctly or not. Okay, now here's another concept, which is called adding or subtracting certs. Now since we know how to simplify certs, this is what we need to know next. So how do you add or subtract certs? Well, for that, remember that the element inside the square root should be the same. So for example, can we add 3x and 4x together? Of course we can. Why? Because both of them have x with them. Or you can say both of them are being multiplied by x. So 3x plus 4x is like 3 apples plus 4 apples. And what's 3 apples plus 4 apples? It's 7 apples. But what if you have 3x plus 4y, like 3 apples and plus 4 oranges? Well, what do you do with 3 apples and 4 oranges? You can't add them up, okay? So we just write them as it is, 3x plus 4y. Why? Because one has x and the other has y. So let's apply that concept over here. So 3 under root 5 plus 4 under root 5, that can be added very easily. And what do we get? We get 7 root 5. Remember that the numbers inside the square root remains the same, okay? You don't add the numbers that are inside the square root. Okay, let's try another example. 5 under root 2 plus 6 under root 3 minus 2 under root 2 plus 4 under root 3. So 5 under root 2 and 2 under root 2 can be further simplified. And since there's a minus sign, so 5 minus 2 is basically 3. Don't forget the root 2. And 6 under root 3 plus 4 under root 3 is going to become 10 under root 3. And there you go. That's your answer. 2 under root 3 minus 4 under root 2. This cannot be further simplified because you have under root 3 here and you have under root 2 over here. So this will just remain as it is, 2 under root 3 minus 4 under root 2. There you go. Okay, now we have 4 under root 3 plus under root 12. Now for a second, you might think that this is not possible, okay? I bet that's what you thought, okay? Let me know in the comment section, by the way, what you thought. Uh, so, but let me tell you, this is possible. And I'll tell you why this is possible. Because 12 here, okay, don't fall for the trap. 12 here can be written like this. So if you start dividing 12 by 2, 2 times 6, divide by 2 again. 2 times 3, divide 3 by 3, 3 times 1, okay? So what do we have? We now have 4. In fact, let's just talk about root 12, okay? We'll come to the entire question in a minute. So root 12 here can be written as 2 times 2 times 3, okay? You see where I'm going with this? You can make a pair of 2. Bring it outside, and what does this become? This becomes 2 under root 3. So that means 4 under root 3 plus root 12 is as good as saying 4 under root 3 plus 2 under root 3. And now we can see that we can further simplify this. So 4 plus 2 becomes 6, and now you have 6 under root 3, and that's your final answer. So remember to first give it some thought before you decide whether it's possible or not, okay? Now, let's try the same over here. So root 6 can't be simplified further because 2 times 3, there's no pair. 24, however, can be. So 24 divided by 2 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that means root 24 can basically be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we'll bring a pair of 2 outside. And what do we have? We have 2 under root 6. So what this becomes now is this. 2 under root 6 minus 5. Okay, now root 24, pay close attention here. Root 24 basically can be written as 2 under root 6, but see that you have a 5 over here, so 5 times 2 is going to become 10. Okay, or if you want, you can first, if you want to see what's going on, let me write it like this, 5 into 2 under root 6, okay. So what this becomes is 2 under root 6 minus 10 under root 6, and 2 minus 10 is basically minus 8 under root 6. And that, fellas, is your final answer. So yeah, uh, I hope you've understood this concept. In the next video, I will show you how to multiply certs. Okay, but for that, you'll have to wait. So yeah, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comment section if you've understood these concepts and uh, make sure to try out a few practice questions on your own. 
And yeah, that's about it. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.